So today I was given the, 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 the theme, Elder Dakota asked me, I said, well, what is the theme for, um, you know, this women's uh, meeting? And so she said, well, joy in the journey. And I thought about a lot of different things and how many of us have gone through some things in our journey that we were not joyful about. But I found out, and I'm going to go to the Old Testament first in Nehemiah chapter 8, beginning at verse 10. And Nehemiah is preparing to build the wall up because the people of God had been in captivity and they were in captivity because of their sin, because they disobeyed God. And now it is time for them to rebuild. So at this point, Nehemiah is saying, and then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Why? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, take hold. Your joy is in the house. So unconditional joy on a journey. Journey is a place, is a, a, a mind where we travel from one place to another. And if you're going to be traveling, you know, from city to city, there's usually instructions that you get or directions that you get so that you can get and fulfill your journey in a timely basis so that you don't get lost. Amen? So sometimes, even when you look at GPS and you pay attention to GPS, they may take you a roundabout way. What they're able to see, tell me, is that where there's more traffic, they're trying to get you to avoid avoid that traffic so they may take you another route but you still have to fulfill the journey amen? amen unconditional joy in your journey helps you to complete your journey we start out one way but sometimes we take short stops that make us go around again and I know that many of us have had experiences in our lives our journeys in our lives have been different Everything that we've gone through as we've been saved when we got saved has not been perfect. But there have been some pitfalls along the way. There have been some trials. There have been some really bad times. There has been some grievous issues. There have been some real struggles. There have been some trials. And we didn't know how we were going to get through it. But touch your neighbor and say, but I'm here now. I'm here right now. Let them know I'm here right now. So just, just, to, just to recap in Nehemiah, there were three, there were three returns to Jerusalem. Zerubbabel, we know his job was to rebuild the, the, the temple. And, and then Ezra's job was to rebuild the worship that God had given the people, but they had already lost. They had lost because they were in Babylon. And then Nehemiah's job, and we often hear that because the people had a mind to work, was to go and build around the, uh, the temple, the, the, the gate, the wall, so that it could not be destroyed again. I want you to know today that whatever your journey has been, joy is the thing that's going to get you through. Now, learned a long time ago that, you know, there's a difference between joy and happiness because happiness is based on what's happening at the moment. And it could be very uh, emotional. We get happy about certain things. We get happy when we get a gift. But if we don't like the gift, we want the receipt so we can take it back and we're not happy anymore. However, joy comes from God and it is a mindset you have to take on joy you have to learn to be joyful in a sad moment because it's not you it's your mind because you know who you serve you know the God that has brought you to this earth and given you what you are to be here for you know the God that you love and serve has a plan for your life so no matter how rough the journey you are going to make it because the joy of the Lord is our strength tell your neighbor hold on hold on the joy the joy is coming the joy is coming grab a hold of your joy we have to understand and know that God already knows ahead of time our journey 
He knows the way that we take. I only got a few minutes, guys, so get with me quick. Get with me quick. Through every obstacle that will hinder us or seem to hinder us, it seems like it's trying to stop us. But it cannot stop us unless God does it. God is going to perfect everything that is concerning you. I don't care how imperfect it's been this far, but where you're going, every step, he's going to be right there with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's always there right by your side. Oh, the, 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 the obstacles may hinder, but they can't stop. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm, I'm unstoppable today. I, I, I came today to find out that I am unstoppable. You can't stop me. The devil couldn't stop me. The naysayers couldn't stop me. The liars couldn't stop me. The backbiters couldn't stop me because I'm still moving. I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm moving, I'm moving. Happiness can be emotional. And emotions vacillate. We are here right now, but let us get an issue on the way home. <laughs> Somebody cut us off. Somebody roll their eyes at us. Somebody didn't say hi to us when we were leaving the sanctuary. And the happiness leaves because it's based on emotions. But joy is a mindset. You fix your mind, even when you don't feel joyful, Although you're happy at a time, there is no fulfillment in that. But joy comes from God. And David asked a lot of times, I need you to restore my joy. I need, every now and then I got to go get my joy back. Touch your neighbor, say, get your joy, get it back, get it back. Joy is a purposeful state of mind, while happiness is a, feel, a feeling that will what? Fade away. Do you realize that based on what's happening in your life right now, that I don't care how bad it is, that you're going forward, because you're still a winner. And this is not the first time you're going through what you've been through. Just a few minutes, just give me a few minutes. This is not the first time you're going through what you're going through right now. Or maybe in another magnitude, maybe in another way. But as you're going through, the key word is through. It has not been able to stop you. Not because you're happy, but because you have joy in the Lord. Of your own strength, you can't do it. Of your own strength, you don't want to do it. But the joy of the Lord gives you strength to move on no matter what you're going through right now. I need somebody to understand the purpose of joy. In your journey, while you're walking, while you're running, you got to reach down and pull that joy up. And sometimes you have to leap for it. Sometimes you can't just sit with your arms folded and, and, and your legs crossed. Sometimes you got to reach up and grab it. Oh, if you need a partner, you just need to just reach, reach across to your partner and say, listen, let's go get this joy. Let's go get this joy. We're going to get through this, and you might have to jump up. You might have to jump up. You might have to leap for it because this joy that I have, the world didn't. It, I have it. It's not a feeling. The world didn't give it to me, and the world sure can't take it away. I wish I had some witnesses here. I get joy when I think about anybody thinking about this morning what he's already done, and if he's done it before, he can do it again. When we met Jesus, things were kind of tipsy-turvy in our lives, whether we were born and raised in church or not. We weren't saved. We didn't know him. But he gave us an uh, invitation. He invited us. He said, I, I, I want to save you. I went to the cross. I died, buried, but I got up. And when I got up, I was able to save you.
All you had to do was receive the invitation. You didn't have to straighten yourself up. You didn't have to, you didn't have to impress anybody. Your life is a, is a part of a party of one. Jesus Christ, he is your savior. He is your keeper. He knows exactly when you need it. And guess what? He knows how to get it to you. But this morning, in a few minutes, after, after afternoon, actually, you got to be reminded that though you walk through the shadow, through the valley of death, the things that would try to kill you, not just physically, but people that would try to kill you, people that want to talk about you and make you feel bad. You got to walk through that. You can't fear no evil because the one thing you got is God is with you. And you need to understand, you see, the enemy wouldn't be messing with you if you weren't a threat. Because if he were riding in his car, he don't care. He can take you where you want to. But because you're a threat. Because you're not going on being happy. But because you know the joy of the Lord has given you the strength to do everything he's told you to do. Every place he has taken you is because of his strength. Come on, put those hands together. Get your joy back. Get your joy back. Where you got to go to get it from? Go and grab it. Grab it from him. You can't do it on your own. Get you a partner that doesn't mind helping you get your joy back. Hand to hand. Say, let's get our joy back. The devil is a liar. I refuse to bow to his tactics. Get your joy back. No more worry. Tell your neighbor, no more worries. To, to, there's no more worries. There, there's no time for fretfulness. And there's no time to be, you know, thinking that God has forgotten. He has not forgotten about you. He knows exactly where you are. That's where you're where you, that's why you're where you are. And if you learn how to wait on the Lord and just be of some good courage, be of some good courage. Stop listening to the bad stuff. Stop listening to the naysayers. Be of good courage. What is he going to do? He's going to strengthen your... Anybody need strength in here this morning? I know usually we want to take a praise break. And that's good because I'm speaking well of. But can we get somebody to take a joy break? Can we get some... Can we get somebody to stand up on their feet and lift up their hands and grab their joy and... I don't feel it, but I know it. I believe in him. Oh, come on and give it to him. Come on and give it to him. Come on and give it to him. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Listen, we've been through financial issues before. We've been through sicknesses before. We've experienced it here. But we saw two miracles last week. They weren't just happy they were healed. The joy of the Lord was their strength to go through what they went through. So they can be an example to us. How many folk are joyful this morning? Full of joy. I need you to holler joy. You've been through financial issues before. You've been through sicknesses before. You've endured bad relationships before. You've been unemployed before. You've been discouraged before. You've even been depressed, depressed before. But you came to the house of the Lord today. You entered his gates with thanksgiving. You, you got into the lobby. Prayerfully, when you got up this morning, you were thankful that you woke up. Because it could have been another way. You woke up, you got yourself together, you got in your car, took the train or the bus, you got to the lobby, and you were supposed to enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
In other words, thank you for bringing me here safely. Thank, thank you for keeping me in the night hour. Thank you. There are many that are in eternity, but for some odd reason, you woke me up this morning, and, and I refuse to sit down on you. And when you get in the court, what are you going to do when, he, when you get in his house? Oh, I'm not talking about a fake praise. Because you don't know like I know. High five the neighbor said, if you only knew, if you only knew. And let them know I'm not going to be quiet this morning. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm working up my joy today. I need strength today. God's done it for me once, and I know he's going to do it for me again. And I know it's Sunday, but it's his day, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. I need you to flex your muscles. I, I need you to conjure up that joy. If you don't have it, it's in here. Let him do it for him. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. I really am almost finished. While we're going through it. We got to learn how to do one thing. We're used to looking down. You know, sometimes we have to look down. Some, you know, I have issues, physical issues, so every now and then I'm very conscious of where I'm walking, so I look, I look down. But my son keeps telling me, no, 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 you need to look up, Mom, because even if you look down, you don't know what's in front of you if you don't look up. And, and, and they hate when I'm walking like an old woman. I'm, listen, I'm a senior citizen, what can I tell you? I, I got I got to remember there's another leg to, to get out the bed with, you know. I'll throw over one, but there's, oh yeah, I got another leg. Then I just got to sit for a minute. And... Y'all laughing because y'all know what I'm talking about. And my children, they treat me so bad. I, no, we don't, we don't need you doing all that get up, out, stop, stop, you know. And you have to learn how to take on the strain. In, in your mindset, you have to say, okay, yeah, I have this issue, but I'm not going to stay like this. This is not how God wants me. This is not how he made me. And I know he's a healer. I know he's a heavy load carrier. I know I can trust him for everything. He's a miracle worker. That is something to be joyful about. So I'm going to lift up my eyes to the hills. Anybody need any help this morning? Lift up your eyes. Lift up your hands. Just holler help. I'm almost done. I promise I'm almost done. So when it was time for the people of God to go back to Jerusalem and reclaim what they lost, there was a strategy. They didn't just walk back up there, you know, like they deserved it because they knew they were wrong. And the reason that they wound up in that place is because they disobeyed God. But how many know that God is so gracious and he's so patient with us? We can mess up royally, but he's still right there to cover. Not cover up, but to cover. The pastor has been trying to get us to, to just to cover one another. Just to, if you can just love one another. You have to like me. I don't care if you don't like me. But the Bible tells us we're supposed to love one another. And in our fellowship, our fellowship will strengthen one another. In our fellowship, genuine fellowship, not just to get to know me because you want to, because of who I am and who I can get. No, no, we don't, we don't have one time for that. This is not a social club. You don't pay dues here and dues as you please. Want to hook up with certain people because of who they are, what they do. That's not how you go. You come to fellowship so you can hear the word and so that you can grow and then you can help somebody else.
You know, had it not been for the Lord on your side, you would not be here, especially you would not be here in your right mind. Color purple. I may be skinny. I may be ugly. Y'all missed the phrase, but thank God I'm here. They didn't just come from a movie. That's real life. Anybody want to un un understand that, that is real life? You know what you had to go through in life? You know the devil tried to kill you, but he could because he doesn't have the power to do it. That is God that is holding you together. God that's keeping you in your right mind. Woo. I only got a few more minutes, but I just want to encourage you today. While you're on this journey, and we're going to be on this journey till Jesus come. And he's coming real soon. He's trying to help us out. You see what's going on in the world. If you're reading the papers, if you're looking at CNN, if you're watching all those people, you read the Bible, read the Bible. That's the backup. That's the reference. But you know what thing about that? Although the world doesn't know what's going on, we as the Christians should know what's going on. And we ought to be encouraged. Why? Because he's coming soon. You're not going through what you're going through to miss out heaven. Tell your neighbor, I'm not missing that out. I'm not missing that out now. Do, do what you want. I'm not missing out heaven. I'm not missing out my relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to do anything that I'm, I'm going to miss heaven after all I've been through. And the Lord has kept me to this point. I refuse to let the situations of the world turn me back. Because joy is my weapon. I need you to put on your weapon this morning. Oh, there is, now wait a minute, I wrote notes, y'all. Pastor James, I wrote notes, okay. Oh, all right. Only supernatural joy, supernatural, because you know, we're joyous and we're hollering and screaming here right now, but many of us don't know what we're going through in this house. What, what, what that does is natural joy from God seems to give us a calm in the midst of what we're going through. It, Mother James, it seems to give us a calm after all you've been through. You're not going to lose your mind. You need your mind for what's next for God to do in your life. I'm not, I'm not going out like that. Tell your neighbor I'm not going out like that in the midst of your storm. We know the Peter story. Peter walked on the word, what Jesus spoke. This, and, and Peter was the only one that had enough sense to realize he's the only one that's going to save us. You, you understand where you are right now? You have, you have prayer partners, and that's wonderful. You may have a prayer circle. All that is good. But what happens when you're by yourself? What, what happens when your prayer partner needs prayer? And a lot of times you can't find them. But we can still dance in the face of the enemy. And it doesn't have to be fake. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to push us to do it. Why we got to push you to praise God? Why, why, why we got to push you to get, get your joy back? Get, what's the matter with you? He's almost here. He's almost here. What are you waiting for? He's almost here. What are you waiting for? Get your joy back. He is still on the throne, when we praise and worship him, the enemy can't take it. I don't know about you, but I got an attitude with the enemy. He's been getting on my nerves a little bit too much. And I'm not going to sit down and cry. I'm not buying a box of tissues anymore. I'm going to learn how to lift my hand, open my mouth, and give him praise that is due him. Because guess what? He's under my feet. I told you that the Bible tells about the enemy that comes against us. And, and, and God will make the enemy to be our what? Our f and you need a footstool in order to get up above where you are because you may be a little too short to get to that place. 
and you can walk on that footstool. And it rises you above the tactics of the enemy. And that's where the enemy belongs, under. <laughs> where, where, where is the enemy? Where, 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 where is the you, you just need to take one step up. He's under your feet. He's already defeated. Hallelujah. There's nothing else he can do to you that God won't allow. And when you get to that place, God will be right there to help you. Put your hands together and praise him. I. He used to sing a song in... In, 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 in Sunday school, like the joy bells are ringing in my, my soul. And, and bells, you know, at that time, they didn't always harmonize. They would be clangy. But that's how the joy would be. It would be so intense. Because I don't have, I need to have this joy to get through where I am. Uh, so anybody, and I want everybody just to stand, because we almost finished right here. Pastor's going to take it. Uh, I let everybody to stand. And, and I, I want you to think about where you are in your journey. Nobody has to remind you. You don't have to say to your neighbor, do you remember where I was? You know where I am? You know what I'm going through? You know how I'm feeling right now? It's between you and God. And, and, and because you know God, see, you can't know of him. There are folks that are associated with God, but they don't know God. They don't have a relationship with God. But when you have a relationship with God, you know how God deals with you. You know how God deals with you, and you know God is going to see you through. Whatever your journey is right now, I just simply want you to take a deep breath. I want you to raise your hand at both of your hands and receive the joy of the Lord that is about to be your strength, more strength than you've ever had before, and open your mouth and confuse the enemy and shout unto the Lord. Thank you for your joy.